multiple discoveries came from our lab experience last week. Going through the data has been nothing short of incredible. We, uh, we found something really interesting, even on the smallest pieces, this little pendant here. You know, it's interesting. Part of it was green, and the other part of it's the typical yellow stone. And we've been seeing quite a few of these green stones come out of the ground, and so we thought this would be a, an interesting time to sample it and see what this green material is. And, you know, under the electron microscope, a hidden world emerged. It looks like stone, but it's anything but. Oxygen, carbon, silicone, all fused together in ways nature doesn't normally arrange. And inside the cracks, tiny little fragments of nickel and chromium. The, uh, the same metals that uh, give stainless steel its strength. The, these are random traces. Across every skin we saw, there was oxygen making up nearly half of the structure. But instead of framing a simple crystal, it's woven like magnesium, aluminum, and silicon in repeating engineered looking layers. In one area, magnesium spikes to 27%, almost like a targeted doping. In another area, aluminum and silicon dominate with chromium laced through. Each region tells a different story. It's like phases of a designed composite. It's not a single natural rock for sure. This is exactly how modern engineers build high performance ceramics, refractories, and, and even geopolymer. But here's where it gets strange. Chromium, nickel, iron all together in a microscopic inclusions, almost identical to what we find in stainless alloys. Yes, instead of being forged in a factory, these are embedded into a silicate matrix, like metal and stone fused at the atomic scale. This isn't the fingerprint of a volcanic eruption. It's the fingerprint of some sort of advanced technology. If this is natural, it rewrites geology. If it's synthetic, it means someone or something engineered advanced ceramic composites long before modern science. And I mean long before science. Materials that resist heat, they, sur they survive corrosion and last for millennia. So the question is, who made this? And why do the fragments of high-tech alloys appear inside what should be simple stone? And this is the only the tip of the iceberg. It's absolutely something to see this type of composite time and time again within these yellow stones. When people see it pulled out of the ground, they often think that it's some sort of clay or, you know, molded cement of some form. And, you know, in a sense, there is some accuracy to that. But the alchemy to make this is far beyond anything I've ever seen, read about, or heard of. Till next time.